So we are good to go. There's a car on the right. Let's hope that it picks the time here or it creeps and waits. Okay, and it does see that they're in the far right lane and it comes out really nicely there. Okay, now this is gonna be interesting. There's a person there, it slowed down really nicely, kind of hesitating, making sure that there's enough space there. I loved that, that was really, really nice. Very, very well done. Okay, let's see lane selection. Look at that, it goes all the way over. It knows that it has to come over here. It came all the way over in one full swoop. That was awesome. Love that, that was so cool. Hey everybody, John here. Welcome back to another full self-driving beta video. I'm gonna enable beta. I just got version 11.4.1 in my car tonight. It is a little bit past 9.30 here on Thursday. May 11th, 2023. It looks like there's some new improvements in this version. Let's see if we come across them here on this drive. I have two waypoints dialed in. It's gonna attempt this pretty difficult left turn here. So first of all, we're at a light and that's not the difficult part. It is a little bit later at night, so the traffic isn't going to be as heavy. However, this road right here, Golf Road, is pretty, uh, pretty well-traveled, I would say. There's quite a bit of traffic usually at all times of day. So the left turn arrow is on, and here we come out of out onto Golf Road. All right. And coming through here really nicely, changing lanes. Nice, it's changed two lanes almost simultaneously, and then coming into the turn lane. We have, do have a bicyclist there on the sidewalk. The car does see them, but did not slow down. It did not show a bicycle for that person. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Okay, coming through here, I have a speed offset of, I believe, 12% dialed in. So we're going 23 and a 20. Okay, and that is correct. So we it is a, a 20 mile per hour road here. Coming up here, nice and slow and steady. And then we're gonna be turning left here. And it is a stop sign. So this is going to be an unprotected left turn. It's going to be a tricky one. So this is Higgins Road that we're coming up on. And it's usually also equally as busy on this road as it is Golf Road. These roads normally run parallel, but right in this area they cross over. So we are good to go. There's a car on the right. Let's hope that it picks the time here, or it creeps and waits. Okay, and it does see that they're in the far right lane and it comes out really nicely there. So. It avoided that car, it knew that it was in the right lane. Now the tricky part here is in about 0.8 miles, it's going to be having to get over to the right to make a right turn. We're gonna see how well it does here with this. It looks like we're speeding ahead here. Now it's dialing it up to 51 miles per hour. And that car behind us, we've now put quite a bit of distance there. So I expect any moment here, it's gonna be getting in the right lane. I have not done anything except for applying a little bit of force to the steering wheel. The car is driving itself completely. I haven't touched the, the accelerator pedal. I always wanna say gas pedal. I haven't touched the accelerator pedal or the brake, yet, not even once in this drive here yet. The car recognized that car turning right, slowed down very appropriately, slowing down even more, I think it, was maybe hesitating, still thinking that car might come back out. I'm not sure quite why it, it slowed down so much there. Had someone been right behind us, I probably would have intervened and given it a little bit of more acceleration. It is turning right. Look at that, it cuts over the line. Really beautiful to make this right turn. Oh, that's so natural. That's exactly how I would have done it. That felt really, really nice. A little bit of movement there in the lane. That's again, the new features that were brought in with version 11. I absolutely love that. Just kind of swerves ever so gently in these lanes, even on these side streets. It just makes it feel like a human driver. I can feel the hesitation as we go through this neighborhood with all these cars parked on the right side. The first time I experienced this where it can maneuver through these side streets with parked cars on the side, my mind was blown. You have to experience this to really appreciate how amazing it is. And turning right here, again, I have a random destination here. I actually have no idea where it's taking us. I think we're, we're getting close. I did see a message there. I didn't get a, a chance to read it there in real time, but it was saying something about maximum speed or something. I don't know if it was limiting it due to this 
residential area, but we are ending our first waypoint and then double tap down to resume the trip. Stopping for stop sign here. Okay, so it used to be a little bit slow in neighborhoods. It would take its time. Here it's doing that unusual creeping behavior. It's okay when nobody is around. <laughs> I have no issues with it when nobody's around. But obviously, people are, are not going to be that patient. Okay, now this is going to be interesting. There's a person there. It slowed down really nicely, kind of hesitating, making sure that there's enough space there. I loved that. That was really, really nice. Very, very well done. Okay, coming over here. Look at all these cars parked on the side. It's like there's a party going on or something. I think they're doing some road work. They have to because it's really unusual to see this many cars parked on the side of the road. The car is going slow, so it's below the speed limit right now. And I think it's because of all these cars parked on the side. It's taking extra caution due to the lane being narrower. Stopping for stop sign and the left turn signal is on. And we're waiting here. There is a car coming on the left. It's slowing down. Okay, now they're, they're turning here. I think there's enough gap here. Let's see. Okay, just barely enough gap. So they were able to get through. It was tight, <laughs> but they got through. Okay, and car proceeding forward. Nicely done. I have not touched the brake or the accelerator since we had that first waypoint. And up here, ooh, this is going to be tricky. So I'm not really looking at the map. I should probably open that up, but let's take a look. So we're going to be turning left here. This is a busy road. And then turning right again, kind of zigzagging up here to our destination. I have Wendy's dialed in. Let's see how well it does this. The left turn signal was on there briefly, and then it went off. And okay, now it turned back on again. There it goes. Okay, and creeping. Okay, I'm looking left. It is wide open on the left and pretty clear on the right. There's some cars coming up pretty quickly. Okay, now let's hope that it goes out and does this really quick. Okay, so the cars, we I think we got a little bit lucky because the cars are more on the right lane. Ooh, just darting straight out really assertively, uh, getting right in front of that car. So that wasn't bad. I mean, the other car was going, uh, sometimes the cars are going a lot faster than you want them to. I love this behavior where it gets over, way over into, ooh, that's not good. Okay, so I'm gonna press on the accelerator. Look at this, it actually continues to drive even though it's saying take over immediately. So the beta is still engaged at that point and still allows you to drive. Not sure what happened there, uh, but we can turn it back on now. I remember when I had four strikes with beta, if you get five strikes, which is basically the red steering wheel of death, but mainly because you're not paying attention. If you get five of those, beta is taken away from you. I remember when I had four, I would get that message. It's, it's basically like a system error message and I would freak out because it's identical. The, that red steering wheel icon and the sound it makes is identical to the time when you get, actually, I think the, the, the strike is like a, it just it just disables beta. I don't know that it, it makes that red that loud noise. Mm, I'm, maybe I'd have to go back and double check. But yeah, every time I'd get that, I I would freak out. <laughs> okay, coming up here. Okay, nice. There was someone behind us there. It was taking a little bit of extra time, but not bad. I mean, it drove naturally enough, where no one would sus suspect that it's driving all on its own and getting the left turn lane. So normally to get to this Wendy's, I would go straight and then turn left. In this case, it's choosing to go left and then turn right, which is another way in, probably a little bit easier. The only disadvantage here is that you have to wait for the green arrow. I think the green arrow will actually turn on before the green light. So I just uh, would no normally never think to go through this way. I think the reason why is because the drive-through is oriented in a way that it's better and more efficient to go straight. But hey, we're not going to the drive-through, so. Okay, here we go. 
All right, coming through here. Okay, let's see lane selection. Look at that. It goes all the way over. It knows that it has to come over here. It came all the way over in one full swoop. That was awesome. Love that. That was so cool. Okay, coming over here and turning right. Nice. Now I think it's just going to say that we're here. Every time you dial in a destination, it takes you to the front door. So the front door must be over here. That'd be funny if it goes through the drive-through. Left turn signal is on. It's almost like it's it is going to go through the drive-through. No way! You're kidding me. 200 feet. It might just stop like right at the drive-through. Oh my gosh! It's going through the drive-through. That's <laughs> freaking hilarious. The last time I had that happen was gosh, a, a, more than a year ago. It took me to a Jimmy. It took me through a Jimmy John's drive through when I was trying to go to the gym and I was like, is this a message? <laughs> oh, that is too funny. All right, let's uh, continue with the trip here. So I think the next destination, actually, let me set this up for success, is going this way, if I remember correctly. Looks like it, it forgot the final destination. Okay, so it's, it's saying we never even arrived at Wendy's. So what I'm going to do here, no one behind us. I'm kind of out of the way. I'm going to put it in park. There we go. Continue trip. That's what we wanted. Put it back in drive. Let's wait for it to reroute. Don't want to interrupt any traffic. Taking a while there to, to find the path. I don't know. I, I don't think I have bad connectivity. I'm not sure why it's taking so long. Still calculating. Okay, there we go. Let's turn it on. All right, we'll take a quick look at the path here. So coming up here and coming around, pretty straightforward. I would say this this feels really natural. Overall impressions, I mean, the rest of this trip is, is not that complicated. Overall impressions, I am impressed. That system error, that's nothing new. It's been doing that for a while, and that's a big reason, I think, also why it's in beta. Hopefully that feedback makes it over to Tesla. It looks like it's routing now without any traffic data. For some reason, it lost its connection. I find that so hard to believe that it loses connection all the time. We have cell towers all over here, and for some reason, it loses con connectivity. Okay, going over a bump. This road has a lot of construction going on right now, so it's all torn up. And Beta handles it like a champ. I was driving through here earlier and I had zero issues with this road, even though the lines are hard to see. It stays all the way to the right and it's it doing exactly what it, what it needs to do in the place that it needs to be. So a little bit of debris there in the road. I am nervous because of the fact that it's going so fast. In fact, I'm gonna slow it down a little bit little bit too fast for my comfort and really close to that the edge of the curb there and a lot of kind of rocks on this road so they can kind of kick up behind the car I did get mud flaps from my model 3 aftermarket which I think helps with some of that in fact it helps quite a bit especially in the winter okay coming up here and we'll be turning left so it was funny, earlier I started filming and my GoPro flew off of my car. I had it strapped to the top, but I didn't I didn't um, clean the glass. It had some pollen on it from parking outside all day. And that didn't allow the suction cups to grip down well enough and the camera flew off. So that was uh, a rough start this evening. Overall, 11.4.1 was a really smooth ride tonight. I, I didn't have any major issues. It, it drove very naturally. It, it surprised me in a couple of situations. It certainly impressed me. I am looking forward to testing this in the day, and hopefully this continues to get better and better. I mean, I, I, at least I've been noticing some improvements recently. There, there are some setbacks with version 11 on the highways. I think everybody knows that, but all in all, I'm really loving the progress. I think it's great. 
Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys in the next video.